I just want to understand a bit more about how the expansion of the scheme happens. Um, it, really, it's a capacity question, and it's also about your kind of unique selling point, which was, you know, the fire station, the involvement in the fire service, and so on. And I can see immediately why that is a very attractive thing for people. But as you start at this becoming something which is diffused out into the population, how do you retain that kind of unique selling point, and how do you be careful that the brand doesn't actually get diluted? Um, because um, it will be done by each fire station in their community. So at one of it, you know, it could be Toxifil or you know, Belvail in the South of Liverpool. It's, um, that fire station reflects that community. And the good thing about it is it's quite tailor-made. You know, this particular one was, was tailor-made for that particular group of people who had the issues that they did. You know, the fire station, in collaboration with the PCT, can look at the issues that are there. And they might be slightly different meals. But it will still be, you know, five, you know, ten, fifteen meals that they will cook, and then we can deal with the issues actually of what that locality is. So it's sort of a bit bespoke as well. But the fire station being the hub, you know, and most fire firefighters live within roughly the area. You know, that the sort of the fire station they are at. And so it's a, it's a quite a community involvement, and so that will reflect locally. But equally, obviously, you've got the brand bit of the meals. The course of the whole life, you know, of environmental services, the smoking, because all the areas where you do this will be a major, you really want to make a difference and try and change the lifestyle of that group of people. And, you know, by advertising locally, by using the PCT and various different messages and links that they have. Because it's a bit of a jumping. We can't achieve this on our own and the PCT won't achieve the health targets on their own without know, partnership and collaboration. So this is a real big win for both of us. You know, we get to reduce fires and you know, we get involved in the community and the PCT get the benefit of reducing their health bits as well. Is there a capacity constraint? Um, that's the, the only actually risk to all this actually when I looked at it was the fact of, you know, it could really be really huge uh, from the point of view of, you know, of getting involved. But then that's something we'd have to sort of we would have to manage. We do have 26 fire stations, you know, four watches, and it's there 24 hours a day every fire station. You know, and you know, so you have got if you really want to be you have got more than afternoon in the evening. So, and there's a whole range like the school one is gonna be in between school times so that you can go out and pick their kids up because that suits to them. It suits to this group of people and they want to come to the fire station. So the capacity bit is only about, you know, we've got a thousand firefighters. I'm just trying to get a sense of yeah. just how big do you think it could be you know, within the terms in which you're operating it at the moment. What is the kind of scaling that you think would be feasible? Um, you, you could say anyone, if, if you had the, the funding, you could say anyone would call today on a fire station. You know, that wouldn't, I just don't see that as being, uh, being an issue or as in the community. And, and it's beyond that, because what you want is, okay, that might be the start of it, but then you'd want to do like what Gary's doing, you might have one firefighter mention three or four other groups yeah. out in the community. You know, and the only cost of this really are the food and, and the gas bills. That's around £2,000, because when I did it as a private scheme, although I, my, my, the management was very supportive, obviously there was, there was no budget because it was a scheme that I was willing to, to do myself. They gave me the time to do it and they gave me the station. But, you know, I had to go away and speak to the likes of, um, you know, um, Sainsbury's to get the food. And, and I wanted to calculate it because I wanted to see if it's feasible, because if it, if it works, it's something I want to be able to say, you know, this, this, is, this is the costing for it. So it's around £2,000 without staffing costs. So, you know, however, that, that's kind of at one course. So whatever, whatever fund we get, that's, you know, it's that time, yeah. whatever, by so, whatever. And the cost get into the bedroom bit because then you're not running the courses, but actually you're sort of all the people who need the school will go, well, we'll put the course on and we'll fund it. And okay, we'll mentor somebody to go and do it. So all of a sudden that, that sort of costs are really, you know, become... Hello, it's uh, Bob Hurd. I'm a new member to Advisory Panel. Um, I've actually written down same which I'll just come to that in a second. Uh, two parts really about getting the message to a wide audience. You say in the application that it's called a lot of media interest. Mm. Have you had any ongoing support from the media? Um, and, and the second part then is um, 
have you approached Sainsbury's? I'd have thought if the answer to A is yes, Sainsbury's would be quite interested. So um, ongoing media support links to Sainsbury's. When we first did the pilot, because it was such a unique idea, the, the local press were very interested in it. But so, so much Jamie's, Jamie's very interested in it because this is the whole point of what he does. So his website editor came down and spent the day with us, filmed it and put it on his website. Um, you know, he, we had a lot of coverage through Jamie's, Jamie's own organisation and that kind of created its own media frenzy. Um, from, this is an initial pilot, there's a lot of press, but Sainsbury's, they, they were really kind because they donated everything for free and any future courses you obviously have to pay for that but you know it, all, all of the media stuff happened while the pilot took place and and, and, certain, and we rewarded those who get donated like like the Sainsbury's because of the, you know we, we were quite clean to say you know we couldn't have done it without Sainsbury's because they, they provided it mm. but they did that because not because of Jamie but because we work with them and their customers on community fire safety so that was it, th that was their call, and it wasn't because it was linked to Jamie. Because Ministry of is a Channel Four program, and their advertising is BBC. So it's not BBC. Sorry, their advertising isn't Channel Four. It's, it's about him as a person. So they they weren't interested in the Jamie call. 